Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 9th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got a brief diary today from Didier showing how to tie in his famous Python scripts with T Shark. T Shark, one of my favorite tools out there, in particular the dash capital T fields option that Didier is using in this diary to extract payloads and then feed them to his script. If you haven't played much with T Shark, in particular not with the dash capital T fields option, well, a great opportunity here for you to learn something new. And yesterday I talked about how good uh, Google Chrome extensions can go bad as the owner changes. Well, something similar may have happened to a barcode scanner that had been quite popular in Google's Play Store. Over 10 million users apparently downloaded the application and it worked fine for years. But apparently something changed early December last year and and all for a sudden, the application turned malicious. Malwarebytes took a closer look at the application and turns out that on December 4th, an update was released that included heavily obfuscated malicious code that then injected additional ads into pages. In this case, it doesn't look at least like the developer changed. Uh, still, the same developer was listed and the application was still signed using that developer's uh, credentials. But for some reason, the intent of the application has changed. It has uh, been removed from the Google Play Store, but may not have been removed from your device yet. And yes, attackers always have interesting ways to obfuscate their malicious code. The latest example is an HTML file that is being used for phishing that apparently is encoded using Morse code. Now, this isn't like you all for a sudden hear your computer beep or such. It's literally that uh, the JavaScript is encoded as dots and dashes and then being translated according According to the Morse code alphabet. So no real new functionality here, just a little bit of more creative way to obfuscate code and of course, again, bypass some filters that way. If you do let the code run, it will just display an HTML page imitating a login form and then as usual, collect credentials. And then we got a new version of Firefox, uh, but only for Windows because this particular version fixes two Windows specific security vulnerabilities. One is a buffer overflow in a angle graphics library. The second one is this famous $i30 bug in the NTFS file system that can lead to a system crash. So if you are not a Windows user, you don't see the update, nothing wrong with Firefox for you. And dominating InfoSec security news uh, today is of course uh, the compromise of uh, the water treatment facility in Old Smar here in Florida. Old Smar, a small town uh, close to Tampa, where of course the Super Bowl happened uh, this weekend, had its water treatment plant uh, compromised and the attacker apparently tried to adjust uh, the amount of lye that uh, would uh, be introduced into uh, the water. Now, lye or sodium hydroxide or caustic soda is typically introduced in the water supply in very small amounts, but uh, the amounts that the attacker adjusted could have caused a serious health risk. Luckily, uh, this intrusion was immediately recognized and mitigated, but of course it does show that attackers do go after these systems, try to cause damage, which really only has been 
documented in this way in a small number of cases. The source of the intrusion appears to be a system that was exposed to the internet via TeamViewer. Now, TeamViewer, of course, can be somewhat secured with passwords. At this point, it's not clear who actually attacked the system and whether or not a weak password was used to protect uh, this TeamViewer access. Well, that's it for today. And this is also the 12th anniversary of uh, this podcast. So, well, the reason I do it for all these years is because people are listening. So let me know that you're listening and any comments, any tweets or anything else that you can do in order to tell me that you're listening, that you like it, well, uh, very much appreciate it. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.